Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And in today's video, I want to discuss my first impressions, my overall thoughts on new Pokemon Snap. The game came out last week, and if you've seen social media, everybody's been playing this game, posting photos of the Pokemon that they've been taking pictures of and sharing their thoughts. I wanted to do the same because I picked it up on launch day and I've been playing it pretty much all weekend and up until today. So let's jump right into the video and let's talk about how good new Pokemon Snap really is. Alrighty, before we get to talking about new Pokemon Snap, I wanted to quickly mention to you guys that a lot of you are not subscribed to the channel. In my previous video where I talked about Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, only 12% of people who watched the video were actually subscribed to the channel. So if you are one of those people and you don't want to miss any new Pokemon videos where we talk about new Snap, we talk about Legends Arceus, we talk about Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and let me know in the comments section why you're not subscribed because you got to fix that. The biggest difference between the original Pokemon Snap and this new iteration is the length. The original Pokemon Snap game, for anybody who played it uh, back on the N64, was short. You could honestly complete it in maybe four to eight hours and you would see everything. You could stretch it, you could maybe get 10 hours out of it. I mean, if you loved all of the, the Pokemon interactions and all of that, but it was a short game and it didn't have a ton to do. New Pokemon Snap completely fixes that. The main campaign is going to get you anywhere from 11 to 20 hours. That's how long it took me. And every single stage has essentially three variants, at least two, and then one for Illumina Pokemon. Um, and you basically can go and experience new things on each of these stages every single time you play it. Each stage has a set of levels. So as you get scored based on the Pokemon photos you take, you're going to level up. Each time you level up and you go back to one of those stages, you're going to be able to see new things, find new Pokemon, uh, take pictures of new interactions, and the map itself is going to change in that way. And you can continue to do that, and you can continue to get different scores and find different Pokemon to fill up your photo decks. On top of the fact that it's just longer, and it has inherently a ton more replay value, you're also going to be able to essentially double your amount of playtime because the photo decks is massive. There's over 200 Pokemon in this game compared to the original, which had like, at most, 60 Pokemon. This is every single generation of Pokemon are covered, 200. The cast is from Gens 1 through Gen 8. It doesn't have a ton of Gen 1 emphasis. You're going to see Pokemon from Kalos. You'll see Unova Pokemon. There's actually a lot of Unova Pokemon. You're going to see Pokemon from different regions interact with one another in a way that we've never seen before. The pacing is also really good for each map as well. You're never in there too long, and they give you a good amount of photos to take. There is a limit on how many photos you can take per round, and if you run out of photos, that's it. You can't get more. So be smart with your shots, but if you're taking one or two or even three shots of every Pokemon you find in the stage, you're not going to run out. You're going to be able to make it to the end unless you're trying to run out. It's around 70 is how many photos you're able to take every time you go into a stage. And once you've gotten past the tutorial, you're able to retry levels. So if you do a run and you're not happy, or maybe you catch something that you want to immediately go back and get, you're like, I know that's there now. I can go do that. They also give you the, you the ability to retry levels. On top of that, it's really easy to save photos to your own album. So there's the photo decks, which is taking four photos based on their star ranking of every single Pokemon that you can find in the game, but you can also save individual photos to your own album. And from your own album, that unlocks essentially what is this game's meta, which is you can do immense levels of like Photoshop editing on these photos. Not only can you add filters, change poses, you can change the photo size themselves. You can cut the photos in a way that is different. You can make them smaller. You can make them larger. You can make it more horizontal or more vertical. You can add different kinds of stickers and different kinds of effects onto every single photo. And then not only can you share them on the game's multiplayer itself, but you can also share them onto social media. So you can share them with your friends, show your friends the Pokemon that you caught. Your friends can show you theirs, see if they're how similar they are, see how different they are. Every single Pokemon in the game has a ton of different programmed actions and they it's very like it's not random, but the way in which you unlock a lot of these 
actions and a lot of these moments is very convoluted. So you're going to be seeing Pokemon do a ton of different things. One of my favorites is on the first stage, there's a family of Bidoof. And as you advance in the stage, you see them build up their dam more and more with sticks and twigs that they find in the forest until eventually they have a finished dam. It's interactions like that that make Pokemon Snap amazing. You are not going to get this level of interaction, this level of Pokemon just being animals in this world in any of the mainline games. We've yet to see that. The closest was maybe like Poke Park and My Pokemon Ranch back on the Wii, where you kind of just observed Pokemon in their natural habitat and they would interact with one another, but it was very, very different. They're on a completely different spectrum. So you're going to be able to essentially just watch Pokemon. You're not catching them. You're not battling them. You're not training them. You are observing them and you are trying to get pictures of them doing really cool things. The, uh, the grading system for photos is a little arbitrary. It's not very deep. It's essentially get the Pokemon in the center of the photo. Uh, have them doing some kind of action. For example, if they're eating a fluff fruit and you get a photo of them doing that, that's going to net you more points. If you light them up with an Illumina Orb, if it's nighttime and you get them to glow and you take a photo of it, that's going to get you more points. You also get more points if you capture multiple Pokemon in the same shot. So it's not exactly, if you're like a, a professional photographer or if you're an amateur photographer who takes it seriously and you abide by the rule of thirds and keeping things slightly off-centered and making, uh, having the, the, the character in your photo kind of be in relation to its surroundings, they don't really grade like that. This is more arbitrary, this is more, it's very formulaic and it's fun and that's the best part about having an album and being able to share photos is there's one element where you're trying to fill up your photo decks and you take photos in the way that the game wants you to take them, but you can also take your own photos at your leisure, take them how you want, edit them, make them look however you feel, and share them and keep them for yourself. There have been some printers, like real life, like apply, uh, like add-ons that have been made by some companies where you can print your Pokemon Snap photos out, sort of like they had back at Blockbuster stores when the original Pokemon Snap came out. So there's a ton of replay value and there's a ton of personality in this game. There are a couple issues, of course. The pacing can sometimes be a little difficult, as plenty of outlets have already noted. Sometimes you get to a point in the game where you don't really know what to do to prog to make progress, because there is a story here. It's 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 nothing crazy, but there's a story, and you can choose to follow the story as deeply as you want, and it takes you through all of the stages, and you interact with the characters, the professor, his assistants, all of those people trying to find legendary Pokemon. So that story does exist. Sometimes it is a little difficult to figure out what it, the game wants you to do to progress. You got to go back into older stages, but you're already going into these older stages. The replay value for this game is amazing. You, there's so many different variants of every single stage and it never gets stale because they don't keep you on one level for very long. As long as you're actively playing, you're going to level up the stages. It's not going to be too much of a grind. This is not meant to be some difficult game. This is meant to be a game where it's going to give you as much as you put into it. In that way, it's a lot like Animal Crossing. You can play it as casually as you want, or you can become really invested in the minutia of editing your photos, sharing them, posting them to the game's online social media service, adding friends with your profile, and ranking up on the leaderboards in multiplayer for your ranking of your photos. So just like Animal Crossing, you're putting in as much effort as you want to get out of it, and the game is more than happy to let you just play casually. It's in those moments where sometimes the story progression is a little, little shaky, but it's ultimately fine because of how much content there is and how easy it is and how encouraging it is for you to actually go back, which you do need to do to progress the story. The other good thing about this game is something I mentioned before, the amount of Pokemon in it are is immense and they're from every gen. There's no specific gen one like love here. There's plenty of Gen 1 Pokemon, don't get me wrong, but they're not sitting on nostalgia. Not to spoil it, but the final boss, quote unquote, Pokemon you take pictures of at the end of the game is from a later gen. He's not a Gen 1 Pokemon. It's not like your goal is to find Charizard or your goal is to find Mew like in the original game. They do a great job of splitting up the generations and really giving you your money's worth of every single generation of Pokemon. Everybody's going to have a fan favorite here and everyone will. There will be some that they're like, oh, why wasn't this one included or this one? But everyone's going to have their one that they're happy about. For me, of course, that's my guy Swampert. He's in this game, which is fantastic. Um, but there's a great cast of characters here. So ultimately, New Pokemon Snap is great. It is 
taking the original concept of Pokemon Snap and bringing it up to speed, catching it up 20 years in a way that I don't think we've ever seen a Pokemon remake do. This remake is fantastic. The music is great. The Pokemon models are great. The Pokemon interacting with the overworld is just amazing to see. There's so much in this game that I have not seen everything. Every time I check social media and people are talking about this game, posting videos or photos of something they see, I'm always seeing something that I haven't come across before. As I mentioned in my previous Pokemon Snap video, which if you've not seen it yet, there's a card in the top right corner. You can go check that out. I mentioned how good legendaries would be in this game and how they could include mythicals and legendaries now and maybe add some in the future. We're going to do a future discussion video on that. There is room here for them to do DLC and added content. Something missing in this game is shinies. They're not here. So that's something that we could see added in the future. There's a whole part of the map that I don't want to get into spoilers, but it's very obvious there could be more stuff added. And I think they will. What they do already with the legendaries is great. There's different ways you have to find them. They're rare. Some are rarer than others. There's specific things you have to do to get them to appear. And they have tons of different interactions and ways of interacting with the overworld and with you, just like all the other Pokemon do. They did a great job handling these creatures and making them feel real in this game. With that being said, what do you guys think of new Pokemon Snap? Did you enjoy the game? Have you, have you played it yet? And do you want to see me cover this game more in the future, as I think there's a lot that we can talk about moving forwards? With that being said, obviously I mentioned before, if you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit that sub button now. We're going to be uploading a ton of new Pokemon content in the future, and we're going to do some Nintendo stuff coming up soon as well, because E3 is fast approaching, and not only will there be a ton of Nintendo news to discuss, but I guarantee you that we're going to see more Pokemon news in that time span as well. So, leave a like on the video if you're excited and you're happy with new Pokemon Snap, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace out.